Greetings. My name is Chad Fothergill, cantor to the Lutheran Summer Music Community and one of the program's organ and church music faculty. As we begin another Lenten journey toward the great three days, I suspect that many of us feel as if we've really never left Lent 2020. We've been in this virtual wilderness, one in which we long for the things that normally nourish and sustain us, of gathering as a full and vibrant assembly, of singing together in community, of sharing freshly baked bread around Eucharistic tables, and of course, fellowship at those most important coffee hours and potlucks. Many communities have still found innovative ways to gather during this time, for worship, for Bible study, for choir rehearsal, and to continue serving a world in need. And yet for some, it just hasn't felt the same. There is much weariness, much grief, even among worship leaders. But Lent isn't really just a somber season, but rather a season of return, a return to God's grace and mercy. On Ash Wednesday, we are invited into a discipline of Lent, a time of fasting, preparation, and serving those in need. In the early church, as well as in many places today, Lent is also a season of instruction and preparation for those who are to be baptized at the Easter Vigil. It is a season of growth. In fact, you may already know that the word Lent comes from an old English word meaning spring season. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, this is a time of new growth, budding, and blooming. We see new vines and new branches, things that evoke lovely baptismal imagery in hymns such as, O Blessed Spring. For worship leaders, the discipline of Lent, this attention to instruction and growth, invites consideration of important questions for our time. For example, what does it mean to really nurture and equip congregations instead of, say, entertaining them? How do we form people of faith rather than treating them as, say, customers or even consumers? In this time of worship production and digital busyness and saturation, have we taken time to distinguish between things that we just want versus what we truly need? Are we giving due regard to the ways in which singing and daily prayer can be encouraged in the home? Are we using the most durable texts and tunes that bear the weight of repetition so that they can be sung over and over again, letting their poetry take root in memory, forming and shaping faith for a lifetime? Are we able to see past the merely creative or accessible in order to discern that which is truly formative and well-crafted? Indeed, these are very tough questions. But the season of Lent, the discipline of Lent, gives us space to ponder and think about them. Around this time last year, I was selecting preludes and postludes to play for Lenten liturgies. One of those selections was a chorale prelude by J.S. Bach from his Orgelbuchlein, or Little Organ Book. The music is a trio, more of kind of a sung aria for the organ. In the feet, there's a heartbeat of eighth notes. In the left hand, a flowing accompaniment. And in the right hand, an ornamented version of the chorale melody. When sung, the chorale is actually a prayer, a prayer for God's grace, not just for the individual, but grace to also help the neighbor. It's not a flashy piece, requires disciplined practice, especially with my trusty metronome. But each time I return to it, I find something new, either musically or theologically. And now, in this time and place, the text and music seem to offer comfort, hope, and a balm. I hope it does for you too, as we journey together toward the cross and toward the promise of resurrection.